Hey guys, welcome back. It's time for part eight of how to build a blog with Laravel. We're really making progress and we're just cruising right along. So in this video, I'm actually super psyched about this one. Um, this is gonna be a lot of fun because we start working with our database. So we've been talking about creating a blog. We've created the structure for the blog. We're using Blade to organize all that. Now it's time to actually start storing posts, which are basically the that's what blogs are all about, are writing blog posts. We're gonna start storing those into a database. And um, we're gonna talk about how to set up our database in this part. Um, and then in the next part, we're actually gonna start saving posts posts to the database. So we got a really good episode coming up, guys. Stay tuned. Okay, so it's been, um, you guys are just really doing good at this. I'm really happy with the um, how everyone's responding to this. I'm getting really good feedback. People are emailing me, tweeting me, leaving comments, and um, really, really, everyone seems to be having a really good time learning along. So this is a really fun episode for me because we're going to start working with our models. And um, we talked about before, we had the model view and the controller aspect um, going on in this um, with Laravel. And... Up till this point, we've been working with the controllers and the views. So the C and the V, or the V and the C, I guess, M, V, C. So M, the V and the C, and I said the models are coming soon, the M. Well, now it's time to work with the models, okay? So before we get started with models, I want to, first of all, talk about databases. Now, hopefully you guys have some understanding of databases, um, but if you haven't, I'm going to give you a very brief overview of databases. There is a lot more to learn, I'm sure, but I wanna give the bare minimum needed for this course just to make sure everyone's up to speed. And then we will probably, um, um, and then we're just gonna go from there and start working on the ones in Laravel. But I just wanna have something so that everyone is on the same page um, as far as what a database is from a very high level, okay? And you might, if you find this interesting, you might wanna look into researching some more. And I might do, I'm thinking about doing a video series down the road, not like right now, all about MySQL, which is the database we'll be using, but all databases carry the same structure. I like to relate a database to a spreadsheet. That seems to be what works to a lot of people because most people have worked with a spreadsheet in the past. And Believe it or not, there's actually a lot of similarities between a database and a spreadsheet. Databases are obviously designed to be programmically um, accessed and retrieved, set and get, but um, they're very similar to a spreadsheet. Now, let me just go ahead. We're going to kind of create our what we would create our posts table for a database. We're going to create that here in a, in a spreadsheet so I can kind of show you what I mean, um, how it works. Now, first thing you need to know is a little vocabulary on when we talk about databases. Now, you're going to know that we're going to create a we're going to create a database, and your database is different than a database table. So, just so you know, a database will have something to the name of maybe like blog. We'll call it like it'll be the blog database, right? So, we'll create a database for a blog, and we're going to connect Laravel to that database. All right. Now within that database, there are lots, we can store lots and lots of information. We take, what we like to do is we like to kind of save um, chunks of related information into tables, okay? So within the table, this is like a, um, the database is a collection of a bunch of tables and then a table is basically like a spreadsheet. So in, within this, we're gonna have a table that's gonna be probably called posts, right? You gotta spell that right, but posts. So all of our posts are stored in the posts table. All right, now we might also have a users table. You might have a categories table and a tags table. We'll have all these different tables and you can have multiple tables in one database, okay? So that's why I wanna clarify, make sure we know that. When I say database, I'm talking about all the tables together. When I talk about a table, I'm talking about a specific one. Now in Laravel and most MVC um, programs, a model relates to a table, okay? So you'll you'll usually create a model, and the model is how um, is how the program like talks back and forth, sets information, and gets information from a database table, 
okay, is through a model. You'll normally have a model for each table in your database. Now there are exceptions, but for the most part, you'll have one model for each table, okay? And if that's that's going to be kind of the general rule you have. Once again, there are exceptions, so don't don't comment saying that there's an exception because there are exceptions. But as far as where we are right now, and from a beginner's mindset, let's just think about it as one model for one table in a database. Um, so for your um, posts table, we're going to have a model called post. All right. Notice it's the singular version, and it's the so just post like this. Uh, post. It's the singular version with a capital letter at the top. All right, at the beginning of the of the model. So we have a post model that relates to a posts, plural, posts table, okay? So um, we just wanna, I wanna kinda create this, this in your guys' brain so everyone's thinking about the same thing. Next we have, um, within our tables, our tables are made up of columns and rows, okay? So we'll have columns, sometimes abbreviated COL, that's a column. And a column is basically a, um, it, it's a piece of information, okay? And we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna visualize this in a second, but it's a piece of information that we want to store. So if we want to store in our, um, in our post column, we're gonna want to store obviously the title of the post, right? That's going to be a column in our, in our database table. Inside the table, um, is is the title. We're also gonna have the body. That's another. Um, that's another column that we store. And then when we start creating entries, we, we're, what we're going to end up doing is creating a row. And a row is basically an entry into the database. Once again, we're going to see this in a, um, in a moment here, but it's a specific entry into the database. Or into the table, I'm sorry. Into the table. All right. And then... Um, and then you'll basically, we'll have like a spreadsheet format and um, we'll see how that works. Okay, so I want you guys to kind of see this. Next, I'm going to um, go ahead and kind of do what we just talked about. So let's call this spreadsheet here. This is basically our table and we're gonna call it our posts table, okay? So this would be like this, posts would be the name of our table. And then we would have basically a bunch of columns. Each column is a piece of information we store um, in our table. Now, one thing we always store is something called ID. Now, ID is basically, um, you'll have this in every table you create in, unless you have a very specific reason not to. But by default, Laravel will actually add this in here and it expects you to have an ID. Now, an ID is basically a simple number. We basically number the rows, one, two, three, and so on, and every number is going to be unique. What this means is you can never have another number one, even if you have a number one call, uh, row and you later delete the row, so it's not in the database, It's the database is never gonna come back and create another number one. It's only going to add it incrementally to the next number and there'll never be another number one, okay? And so this continues on forever. You could have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of millions of rows in a database table and um, the ID will continue to increase and never repeat. Okay, so we always have this item called an ID. Next, for our posts table, we, we mentioned how we wanted to have a title. So we're gonna create a, um, a column called title, and you also probably have your main body of the blog post, which will be the body. Okay, so we'll have a column for body, and um, for right now, I think we're gonna keep it at this. We might add some more later as we start working with tags and categories and authors and stuff like that. But for right now, we're just going to have a title and a body just to keep it easy for learning. And then the other thing that Laravel kind of expects, and it's a really good idea to have, are what we call timestamps. Now, a timestamp is um, basically just when the row was created or the entry was created. Sometimes row and entry are used synonymously, meaning they're the same thing. So you'll hear sometimes hear me say the word entry and sometimes row. Just know they're they're the same thing, okay? Um, with timestamps normally consist of two columns, two columns, yep. We usually have a created at that's usually written like this, so it's created underscore at, and then you normally have an updated at. Um, and these are generally, both of these columns together make up a, the what we call timestamps, okay? So this would basically be, these would be the columns for our, um, for our posts database. So let's go ahead, we're just gonna bold those there. 
So this is these are what columns are. So everything in this column is an ID, everything in this column is a title, and so forth. And then when we create entries into our database, when we write a new blog post, we'll create a new entry which creates a new row. The row will be given automatically a new ID that's unique and unused and increments up. It'll and then we're going to add the information that we have. So in this case, we have a title. So let's say that we wrote in our, my first title was the name of our title, and then we had body, which was something awesome. This is a blog post, okay? And we would store that in the database under the title. Let's say it was created at it's 10:44 right now, so it's 10:44 a.m. And so then we would automatically fill in the timestamps, both timestamps to be the time the entry was created, 10.44 a.m. Okay, let's say I go back through and now I write another blog post, right? So it's gonna say my second title is, or whatever I decide to title it, this is another awesome blog post. Um, and then let's say we create this 15 minutes later, right? So it's gonna be 10.59 a.m. and 10.59 AM. And you can see how every time we submit a new title, we're creating a row. Remember, this is a row, this is a row, this is a row, or an entry into the database, okay? And so I want you to think about this, columns and rows. Columns are what the information that we're storing, right? And then a row is basically a specific entry that we wanna recall later. Now, just to kind of show this later, let's say it was 10.59 and I created the second title, and then a minute or two later, so 11 AM, I remembered, oh shoot, I need to change the title, I'm just gonna call this my title instead of my first title. I'm gonna edit that. Well, when we edit this, what we do is it updates our um, updated at time, right? So let's say it was 11.01 when we cr updated that. The created will stay the same. The created never changes once it's set. This is when the row was first created. And the updated will be every time we make an, an edit or change to that row, only to that row. Notice how this one doesn't change because we didn't update that row, but this one does. And so then the updated will be changed to whenever that was last updated. Pretty simple, right? Okay, so that's kind of how the databases work. And that's gonna basically sum up how we're gonna create this database. Well, now let's go over to Laravel and let's make this, let's take exactly what we created here and work with it in Laravel. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Let's go ahead, open up our terminal and oh, it's on the other, my other screen here. Um, we're gonna CD into sites where I've got my, this is where I've, just go to your project, this is where I've stored my project. Um, I've called it blog. Now we're in our blog folder and you should know the trick. So you're gonna open it up in your text editor, in this case Sublime for me. And, um, and here we are. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is we're going to actually, we're gonna still use the um, we're still gonna use the terminal, so keep your terminal open. And we're gonna use a handy little, um, oops, sorry about that. We're gonna use a handy little trick to automatically generate a model for us to work with our database. All right, so what you can do here is you can go into your PHP Artisan. Remember like this when we do PHP Artisan serve? We're using the Artisan commands, that's why we use PHP Artisan. We're using the artisan commands and we're telling our terminal to use the P to use PHP language to translate the artisan commands. So that's why I write PHP artisan and then the command here. Okay, so um, there's an awesome command we can use artisan for and that is for generating a migration for us. So we do our PHP artisan and instead of serve, we're gonna use a new command and that's make. And we're gonna start using make a lot more because make saves us a bunch of time. Make allows us to automatically generate things like controllers, models, um, even views and migrations and all sorts of other things automatically. So it saves us a ton of time and that's what we're gonna use to generate our model today. So what we would do is we just say make model and then we give it the name of the model we wanna create. In this case, it's going to be post, all right? so. Remember when I mentioned before that the name of your model is going to be the singular version of your table and with a capital letter? Well, that's what we do here. So we're gonna do, we're gonna correspond to a posts table, which we haven't created yet, but we're gonna make one. And we wanna call the model post, singular with a capital P. All right, now if I click enter, this is actually gonna go ahead and create a model for us. However, I actually wanna do one other thing and I actually wanna create something called a migration. 
Now, migration is a way for Laravel to actually create our database tables for us. This is really useful. Um, this is basically, we're gonna see it in a second and I think it'll make more sense, but just know that migrations are how we create and edit database tables. Now, there's two ways you could go about this. The old school way where we, I used to do it when I first learned to program was we would actually go to the database, create a table in the database and create the columns and everything in the database, not using any of our uh, PHP or anything like that. We would just create it inside the database and then we would go to our PHP framework. We would just simply connect to the database and then we would just start using that table that we had already created and that was created um, you know, independently of the database, of the framework. Well, now it's really cool because frameworks are getting smarter and Laravel is one of these smart frameworks that have migrations and migrations allow us to basically edit the ta database table through the framework, which is a big time saver. And it's also very useful if you start sharing this code with your friends because, um, or coworkers or whatever, because they can simply run these migrations and get the exact same database that you have. All right, because it was created in the framework and Laravel can recreate the the framework, uh, the framework table as well. There's other things we'll learn about migrations that make them even more awesome. I won't get into it now, but you'll see those coming up. Okay, so we're gonna do post and then we're gonna tell it migration. And this just means to create a migration um, for the post posts table as well. You can also just, the shorthand for migration is just do a single dash and then M or you can do um, the double dash and migration. Either one will work. Okay, let's go ahead and click enter. You can see it created the model successfully, and then it said created a migration, and the migration has a timestamp here, and um, um, it called the migration create posts table. So it knows we're gonna create a table for posts. So it's really, really smart. Okay, let's come back over to Laravel, and um, let's go ahead and just take a look at the model we created. So we're gonna go under app, and then if you remember from the beginning of the, to, when we looked at the file structure, part one of this whole series, um, I mentioned how user was a model. And um, that's what we have here. You can see that we've now also created a, posts, a post model as well. And post looks very similar, but it has a little bit less information because the user model's already basically kind of been created for us. And this is more of like a, a skeleton model. Um, just like with controllers, you can see here that we've created a class, it's called post, and it extends model. And so what this means is there's a ton, even though there's nothing in here, just by having this and extending model, we have access to a ton of really useful things. Soon what we're going to be able to do is commands in our controller, we're going to be able to do things like this. We're going to be able to do things like post all, like that. And it's going to pull every post that we've created from our database with one little thing like that. Because in our model, we have a command called all that drags everything out of the database. We can also do things like where, um, uh, let's just say title, if you want to find a specific title, um, you could do like where title equals um, my first title. And it would pull first title. Um, gosh, guys, I can't spell today. Um, and it would pull that thing from the database, right? Well, we would do one other thing, we would do get like that. Then it would pull from the database, right? So we're gonna learn some of these commands down the road. Um, well, in the next video, we're gonna learn these. Um, but basically know that that's what we're inheriting by just having, by extending model, is all these, there's a whole bunch of commands that we're gonna gain that are very, very useful. And all that comes in our model. So right now, even though we don't have anything in here, it's still incredibly valuable and the model already has a ton of power to add and remove things from the database and work with the database a ton. Okay, so that's what the, that's our model as it is right now. Now let's go ahead and take it the other file that we created, which is the migration. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and actually just cut off the video here. I actually planned on talking about migrations in this video and I went ahead and filmed it. And um, by the time I was done, the migrations turned in like got a little more complex than I expected because um, I kind of forgot we had to um, install, we had to get connected to our MySQL, we had to set Laravel up to connect to our database. And there were a bunch of other things that we had to go into in addition to explaining migrations. I kind of forgot about the setup that was required for those. And we will get into all that in the next video, but it turned into such a large 
chunk that I decided to break this. Instead of doing models and migrations in one video, I decided to separate them out. So this was all about models. Now we're going and creating our first model, and that's what we did here. We're basically now done with our model as of right now, and I'm going to go ahead and we're gonna continue this in the next video, and it's going to be about migrations and getting our migrations set up and learning more about that migration we just created. And then we can actually start um, adding stuff to our database um, in the video that follows, okay? So coming up is all about migrations. Guys, migrations are awesome. I absolutely love migrations in Laravel. They're easy to work with. And we're gonna actually talk, we have a ton of information, like a ton of information about migrations in the next video. It's gonna be a bit long. I think it might be close to a half hour. So get your thinking caps on and get ready to learn. We are gonna really be learning a lot in the next video. And we're gonna get MySQL set up and um, all of our migrations and connect them to Laravel and get them to start actually talking to each other. So good stuff coming up, guys. Stay tuned. Thanks a ton. Um, subscribe if you haven't. Stay up to date on the newest videos. Also, if you do like these videos, um, go ahead and like them. And um, if you have questions, feel free to comment. I've actually really been enjoying helping you guys. Um, I've actually really enjoyed helping you guys uh, that have questions. So feel free to comment below. And I'm trying to basically comment to every reply to anything that you guys ask me. So um, feel free to do that. Okay, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace.